this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, oh yes, this is the day. Good morning and welcome, everyone. I just want to clarify that was Marty singing, not me. So, uh, as Marty said, I'm Suzanne Garfield, and I'm pleased to serve as a member of the Capital City Unity Board. And again, I'm delighted to be Marty's platform assistant today. We're all happy you can join us, as Marty pointed out, on this last Sunday in August. I don't know about you, but I have a few choice words for August. So long, farewell, Auf Wiedersehen, goodbye. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. So let's take a deep breath and get ready to welcome September, which I pray will be a cooler month. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you. We know who you are. You are a child of God, and we are grateful your consciousness is now part of ours. If you'd like to know more about us, please check out our website at capitalcityunity.org, where you'll find a link to our YouTube channel for all the lessons and meditation. So here's the flow of today's service. We'll do the reading of the daily word. We have blessing the names of the people in our prayer box. And please don't email us if you have someone or something that you would like us to pray for. You can email us at capitalcityunity at gmail.com. We'll do our affirmations. We will have our meditation song. And if you have Wings of Song hymnal, it's number six, Morning Has Broken. And then we will move to meditation. We'll hear Marty's message. We'll do our love offering and our closing prayer. So let's settle in we, and let's bless everyone as we come together to do what we do best. We pray and we center ourselves in God. And even though we are not all in the same room, we are together. We are connected in spirit and in thought. For as Jesus, our way shower affirmed, whenever two or more gather in my name, I am there. I am there. And more than ever this morning, this brilliant morning, August, we connect and pray with our brothers and sisters in a world that seems to be out of alignment, and filled with anger, and grief, fear, and confusion, hate, and hurt. Yet we know Jesus stands in our midst, holding us, loving us, and urging us forward out of the shadows and into the light, urging us to be our better selves, our higher selves, our divine self. Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world or bring peace to the world or bring happiness to the world, go home and love your family. Mankind, dear friends, is our family. This is the time to reach out, not in anger or fear, but in love, kindness, and compassion. This is a time to hold everyone in our hearts and in divine light and pray for healing and understanding. This is a time to truly see and celebrate the Christ light in everyone. This is a time to remember we are one divine mind and we belong to each other. And today's daily word says it all. Light, the light of God surrounds me. When darkness casts shadows in my life or in the life of someone I care about, I call upon the divine light that lives within me and expresses as me. Just as the light of the sun illuminates the sky, the light of God illuminates my mind, brightens my soul and warms my heart. Even during life's darkest moments, the light of God is always shining within me just as it shines within all people. Basking in this light, I find the strength and power to lift myself up through acts of service and loving kindness. I can be the light that helps guide others through any darkness they may be facing. 
every smile, kind word, thoughtful deed, or offer of help has the potential to brighten someone's day. And let me close the daily word with a reading from John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Remember, dear friends, each of us shine. We are the light of the world. And now to those affirmations that we say together and know at the core of our soul. Let us truly feel how powerful these words are. There is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life. God the good, omnipotent. Let's, let's affirm these together. There is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life, God the good, omnipotent. And as you hold that in your heart, there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in this ministry, God the good, omnipotent. Let's affirm this together. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in this ministry, God the good, omnipotent. And there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in the world today, God the good, omnipotent. Let's affirm this together. If there is only one presence, one power, one love active in the world today, God the good, omnipotent. Hold that, hold that right now. And it is with these words and in this consciousness that we bless the names of the people in the prayer box and the prayer requests you have in your hearts, knowing as we speak our affirmations and we pray today, we hold them in that healing and joyful light of love and peace. And we pray, O oh loving presence, for those on the front lines, the healthcare workers, the firefighters, police, grocery and store workers, those who make our world safer today and have kept the high ground. We pray with those who have lost homes to the wildfires and those who have been evacuated. We see you safely back in your homes. We pray for those who are hurting, those who have lost loved ones from violence those who feel they have no voice or hope. Oh, loving presence, lead them through the storm and into the light. Let them know the peace that passes all understanding, that we are all children of God, and let them know that they are loved beyond measure and love always prevails. Thank you, God. Amen. And now to prepare for meditation, let's center ourselves with song. Again, from the Wings of Song, it's hymn number six, Morning Has Broken. Gordon?
invite you to be in this moment. Relax into your seat. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. Experience yourself sinking into your chair and allowing your body to rest all its weight. Relax your hands in a comfortable position. As we begin our meditation, there's nothing special you must do. Only focus on your breath. Become aware of your breath. Now take a deep breath. Hold and let it out slowly. Again, breathe in deeply through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. Feel the tension flowing out with your breath. Once more, breathe in deeply and breathe out pressure or anxiety. You are aware of each breath. Gently in and release. As your breath becomes a rhythm, feel your body sinking deeper into the chair, settling in. Breathe in and out naturally, slowly. Focus on your breathing and feel relaxed with it. As your body breathes, the body calms. As you exhale, feel your body releasing toxins, stress, and any negativity that it has accumulated. Your breathing is the rhythm of the ocean of the waves. In slowly and out slowly. Feel the breath as it enters with a cool feeling and then warming as it gently travels down into the lungs. I invite you to stay for a moment right here, breathing in slowly and out slowly. Being aware of yourself, your body being right here, right now. How do you think of your body? What about your environment? What are you sensing? What are you feeling? Our bodies, our senses provide a link to our environment. We are aware of our environment. We see colors. We smell fragrance. We taste. We hear, we feel warm and cold, we touch one another. All of these physical attributes have life and vitality because we sense them. Stay for a moment, breathing in and out. Listen and feel, smell. You exist, you're here. You think, you feel, you perceive. You know you are. 
quietly affirms to yourself, I exist. I'm here. I think. I feel. I perceive. I am. So, if you know you exist and feel and think, do you see your body as part of everything or as something separate? Do you think of yourself only as human? Do you look out into your environment as something separate from you, something not connected to your divine mind? Do you think God's only inside? Place your hand gently on your heart center and feel a shift. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and breathe away any mist, any doubt that has separated you from this brilliant, powerful light of divine mind. The loving presence, God. See it or feel it, touch it or sense it. Let the light dissolve the barriers, any fault separation. You are part of the environment and the environment is part of you. It's all the divine mind. You are not separate from it. All is God. There is no out there. There is nothing you experience from your senses, from your, your environment, that isn't the divine mind. Like a drop in the ocean, no beginning, no end. No separation exists between your physical self, your environment, your experiences, and your Christ self. There was never any separation. All is God. All is God, and it is impossible to ever have a mind apart from the divine mind. Breathe in. Breathe out. You live in God. You move in God. You have your being in God. You are centered in God and God is centered in you. No separation, no barriers, all love, all power, all life, all creativity is centered in you. You are the Christ, the child of the living God. This is your true nature. And you cannot be separated from your true nature. You are the light of the world. Claim this for yourself. I am the Christ, the child of the living God. I am the light of the world. I am the Christ, 
the child of the living God. I am the light of the world. As our meditation time comes to a close, begin to bring yourself back. Breathe in the light. Breathe out the light. The light of God. The love of God. All God. As you open your eyes and look around the wondrous world created by divine mind. See the colors and hear the sounds of life, your life. Feel the earth, smell the fragrance of its bounty and realize as divine mind, you are a part of everything you see and touch and feel and hear and think. Take a moment and be grateful. Feel gratefulness. My friends, we are divine beings with extraordinary abilities. I urge you to live every waking moment with the awareness that God is present in and part of all that is. All God, all love, all the time. Now I invite you to stay with your heart open and listen to Marty's wonderful loving message. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you very much for that powerful reminder of who we really are. Thank you very much want to acknowledge the wonderful things that Suzanne does to express her love for this ministry, the loving attention she pays to taking care of our finances, the messages, the gentle reminders I get on Saturdays reminding me to prepare for the Sunday service through the e-blasts. Really appreciate you, Suzanne. And then, of course, the great meditations that you lead us in. Thank you very much. Also like to acknowledge Veldon Leverich. Uh, Veldon has decided at the young age of 85 to retire from his career in radio and media here in Sacramento. Got to know Veldon and Diane at the retreat to Unity Village a couple summers ago. And uh, really grateful for your consciousness, Veldon. And uh, Diane, for you, um, as they're retiring, they're decide they've decided to move to Fresno to be with family and friends. So uh, we're releasing them from being part of our congregation physically, but you'll always be part of us uh, spiritually. And of course, you can join us uh, through this platform uh, on Sundays, Thursday mornings. So congratulations, Veldon and uh, I'll miss you. So we've been looking at uh, Practical Metaphysics, the book by Eric Butterworth. And in the fifth chapter of the book, he says some thought-provoking things about love I'd like to share with us today. For instance, right up front, he says, love is undefinable. Undefinable. How, how can this be when for every one of us, love is indispensable? Not only can we not live without love, we can't survive without it. It's also the case that we are, in fact, always loving. We cannot not love. Our closing song on Sundays asserts that love is the only power, love is the only way. So how is it that we cannot define this foundational, essential, universal spiritual activity? So bear with me here because Mr. Butterworth's explanation is initially very sophisticated. But then in the end, it comes down to the only thing he's really talking about on every page of his book, 
And the only thing we really talk about here on Sundays, that there is only one God active in my life and in the world right now. And therefore, he says, there is only love. Love is all there is. This is how Mr. Butterworth starts his examination of the practical metaphysics of love. He says, love is the completeness of life. Hmm. Jesuit priest Pierre Teilhard de Chardin refers to it as the totalization of life. On many occasions, Jesus makes the statement, love one another, but this is not expressed because it is a nice Sunday school moral to love people. What he's really saying is that you should love because when you are not giving expression to love, you are out of the flow of the cosmic process of love, out of the flow of the divine rhythm. You're not in tune with the very specific power that enables you to live vitally and abundantly. When you give way to love, when you allow this cosmic flow to come forth within you, then you are synchronized with this tremendous transcendent process, and you enter the dimension of divine completion, the totalization which only love can experience in you. So what he's saying is love is the completeness of life expressing itself in our experience, as Suzanne led us uh, through in her meditation. Now, you'll remember that Mr. Butterworth starts his book with the observation that God is presence, that whatever I'm experiencing right now is God, presencing God in me. I practice the presence of God when, as the great German mystic Meister Eckhart expressed it, I let God be God in me. The allness of God, the completeness of God, the love of God is 100% present in me now and always. So let's affirm this. Let's affirm I am letting God be God in me right now, just as I am. I am letting God be God in me right now, just as I am. Together, I am letting God be God in me right now, just as I am. Now, when we focus on this, when we consciously allow God's presence to be just what our current experience is in our bodies and our thoughts, we are opening our conscious experience, as Mr. Butterworth just told us, to become synchronized with this tremendous transcendent process, the totalization which only love can experience in you. Notice how consistent he is in his message. God, he told us in earlier chapters, is always centered in each of us. We are the eachness of the allness of God. Our task then is to allow ourselves to focus in turn on centering ourselves in God. Jesus was one who made this his life practice, and he taught us in turn how we too can center ourselves in God. It is this flow of consciousness from the God of us to the human of us and back that is divine completion, the divine completion Mr. Butterworth is talking talking about. When I close the circle of awareness of God and me as one activity, expressing moment to moment to moment in whatever I am physically and mentally experiencing, I let go and find myself in the flow of love, life, power, and presence. This experience, this totalization of our consciousness in and as the flow of the allness of God is the undefinable love that we are always in, but so often don't see or feel or even rely upon. For the all too easy mistake we humans make is to look for love from the outside. We are conditioned from infancy to expect that this life-sustaining love somehow exists outside rather than within. This is perfectly understandable, for as infants, we simply do not have the capacity for self-reflective consciousness that activates the awareness of who we really are. So we naturally mistake our helpless dependence on our parents and families for everything we need for the real nature and activity of love. In other words, we assume that the care we receive from others is love, and then we spend a lifetime fooled into thinking we need to find ways to get more of this from other people. 
Now, this doesn't mean that our parents were not loving. It just means that from our earliest years, we did not and could not appreciate our own innate loving nature. Mr. Butterworth says, love is a much needed commodity and it's so important to us. It's important that we find someone to give us love. And if we find that one, then we have love to give. But if we don't find people that give us love, then we're empty and devoid of love. And that's what's wrong with our lives. Love, we believe, comes natural to us when we find the right person to love or to be loved by. This is the way our reasoning goes about this consciousness of love, and it's all erroneous. This isn't what love is at all. Life for most persons, he goes on, is a long quest for love. We're always looking for love here and there and everywhere in experiences and relationships. Oh, someday I'm going to find my love. Across the crowded room, love comes into my life. Love becomes a quest for objects of love, and in human consciousness, I'm sure we all realize that this is where we are much of the time. The most sordid and depraved lies that we experience out here in the world, and there are a lot of them really crying out, won't somebody please love me? In other words, most of us are, as the song goes, looking for love in all the wrong places. But still, the drive to be in the flow of love, even when we think we must do whatever we can to get it from someone else, comes from our fundamental nature as the eachness of the allness of God. Mr. Butterworth puts it this way. He says, yet intuitively within ourselves, we know that love is an inner power, not an object, that our need is not to be loved. Our need is to love. Our need is to be loved, not to be loved. Our need is to become aware of something within ourselves. Within every person, there is a hunger and a thirst to express love, to radiate love, to get ourselves in tune with the cosmic flow at the root of our being, to simply plug in, to turn the lights on, and to express out of the overflow of this inner love a lovingness toward life. We have a hunger for this, but we don't understand the process. So we're out looking for it somewhere else while all the time it's within ourselves. Now I can testify to the difficulty that confusing the true source of love can cause us. I am, an, I am one of us who have spent many a good year of my life looking for that certain someone whose love and care would complete me. We even have that misleading expression, I'm looking for my better half. We think we are only half a human without that special someone to make us whole. For years, I felt isolated and alone because I had no clue about the power of love that was living patiently within me. I was projecting onto potential partners my own innate loving nature. And to make matters more difficult, I indicted myself as a human failure because I never had a partner relationship that lasted longer than two years. Eventually, I just gave up looking deciding that being alone was less painful than rejection and self-recrimination. So I stopped looking for love in all the wrong places. Stopping the madness, so to speak, is the first step. We have to deny what Emily Cady, author of our Unity Foundational text, Lessons in Truth, calls error consciousness. We have to deny error consciousness before we can affirm the more powerful truth for ourselves. But nonetheless, Eric Butterworth says, even then we have more work to do for we still need to understand the actual universal nature and process of love in its practical applications in our lives. He says this, I cannot give love to anyone and no one can give love to me. Now don't misunderstand this. I can be loving. I can create a loving environment. I can bathe a person in the light of love as I see this person in love, but I do not exchange anything. I don't feel any loss because I've loved this person. Nothing has gone out of me, but when I love a person in that consciousness, then that person suddenly feels relaxed, feels secure, feels able to let down his or her own natural resistance, which is always the only problem that we ever have in our lives. As people let down their resistance, he says, they commune with the light of love within themselves, and love flows easily for and through them. 
they love themselves and I love myself only in a transcendent way, in a spiritual sense. Out of this consciousness of self-love and seeing in the light of love, then there's a commingling, a beautiful relationship ensues. But it's a relationship that is built on a foundation, on a root consciousness of the divine flow of this cosmic process. Love, he is saying, is not something we give or take. We don't trade love with the beloved. Instead, we simply open ourselves to the consciousness of the omnipresence of love that has always been at the core of our being. And because this love, like God, is all there is, it brings our idea and experience of the other person into the presence of that all-encompassing love. And he says a very important thing there, almost in passing. Did you notice it? He says, the only problem that ever we have in our lives is our natural resistance to love. This resistance to love is just another way our error consciousness keeps us from feeling the presence of God and the love of God in everything. Every time we have a limiting thought, a belittling thought, a cutting thought, we are actually resisting love. We are, in essence, blindly loving the limitation rather than the creative source that generated the limiting thought. When I was looking for and failing to find the love of my life, and when I condemned myself for failing to do so, I was actually loving the failure, because we cannot not love. I cannot not love myself and all that was within me. For sure, this love of failure was in my subconscious, so I wasn't aware of it, but failure was what I was manifesting in my actual life. Thoughts held in the subconscious mind produce after their kind. So what, what to do? Well, Mr. Butterworth invites me to re-examine what was actually happening when I was looking for love in all the wrong places. He says, the only wrong involved, as far as I'm concerned, is that I'm seeing out of a negative consciousness. I have to straighten out that, and that's all I can ever do. When I straighten out my thoughts and get myself centered in the consciousness of love, not a love that is human, not a love that is willful, but a love that is attuned to the divine flowing, which is not mine at all, but simply the overflow of a divine process within me, it's all I ever can do. So again, he brings me, he brings us to let go and let God. It's actually important for me to admit I don't know how to love in the way I want. The evidence of my life is that the human mind of me does not know how to attract and build a relationship with a life partner. And so I let go of all judgments about myself and simply commit to being in the consciousness of the love that is actually who I am, who I am as the eachness of the allness of God. Mr. Butterworth says, when I get centered in that consciousness, I feel good. I feel compassionate. And it's a case of love your enemies, love those who spitefully use you. Love wherever there are difficulties. I feel compassion. And the compassion is not so much what I'm giving the person as what I'm giving way to within myself. And suddenly, out of that consciousness of compassion, I see clearly. I see clearly, and out of that clear sight, I'm seeing through the eyes of love. So in our practical metaphysics, we practice the presence of God, and so we practice the love that God is. And then we work on changing our thoughts so that they reflect this one presence and one power and one love that we are. When Mr. Butterworth concludes his chapter on love with these very challenging words, he says, don't try to love ever. Don't try, let. To try something you're doing to try is something you're doing, something you're giving. Letting is something you're allowing, something that you're simply being a channel for. Stop trying to love. Get yourself centered, first of all. Block the situation out. Stop looking at the person. Get yourself centered so you realize you're one with the divine flow. Loved with an everlasting love by the infinite process that can never be anything else but love in you. Because God is love and you're created in the love of God. You're created in love. 
When he spoke to us last month, you might remember Reverend Phil Pearson told us, he said, once we can learn always to think from the heart, our lives will be transformed. People will know you are different because of the power of your heart, not just in the way you embrace people, but the way in which things seem to always go right for your life and the way you are always surrounded by a harmonious relationship with people. All of that, as you and I know, can be true if we learn to come from our hearts. Our individual future success comes when we get into our hearts by being centers of love. We can feel the presence of God in our hearts, fulfilling our heart's desire for good in every area of our lives. And so, my friends, love is the only power, the only way. And when we sing this song at the close of our time together this morning, let's hear these words differently. When we sing, see our circle grow, let us see the circle of our relationship with the God within expanding to the allness, growing to the allness. Let us feel the love as the completeness of life and the human of us and the divine of us see and feel their oneness and fall in love all over again. See our circle grow. And so this morning, Divine Presence, we give thanks for the power of love that is the only activity within us and that what we feel and express in thoughts and feelings and emotions is your love expressing as us, giving us access to infinite love, to love ourselves, to love our enemies, to love the world, to love God. We center ourselves in your love, knowing that your love is always centered in us. And for this completeness, this totalization of life that is love, we are eternally grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. And so now is our opportunity to share our prosperity with this ministry. The allness of God that is within us is also the infinite prosperity of God within us. And so in gratitude, we share with our source of goodness. We share with this ministry, which is the circle of people on this platform right now, and our brothers and sisters who are here with us in spirit, even if they're not physically present. And so we take our love offerings in our hands, virtually or actually, and we endow them with the truth of this source of prosperity. And we affirm divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. And we can share our offerings electronically or by sending check information is available on how to do this in the weekly e-blast. And before we close, I'd like to extend a special invitation to everyone to join us in our midweek prayer service Thursday mornings at nine o'clock. This Thursday will be September, so we're going to be in that cooler month that Suzanne has um, affirmed. So join us at nine o'clock using the same call in number on this Uber conference platform. And now let us stand and form a virtual circle and join in singing our song, Love is the Only Power, Love is the Only Way. And let us see the circle of completion of the love power within us grow all the way to the allness of God. Gordon?
And as I unmute all the microphones so that we can all join in, let us join in together with our prayer for protection. The light of God. The love of God. The power of God. And so it is. We are good. Amen. Mm -hmm.